Okay, I'm back with part three of the video about making your own uh, key reminder for your uh, car. Uh, this is the third video I made about this, and now I'm completed making the box with the relays in it, and I'm going to actually test it, show it how, show you how it works, and then probably make another video, maybe showing how it goes into the car and how it, how it hooks up. But this is the one I was talking about where uh, I was replacing this old 1970s technology that doesn't work anymore, and was actually running my battery down a little bit and uh, I was going to make a box just using uh, relay logic to uh, do all the functions of it. Three functions it does just to remind you it does the uh, key in the ignition reminder, uh, the seat belt warning light and also uh, headlights on warning and uh, in the last video I went over the schematic that I drew up for it and then uh, today what I'm going to do is just uh, show you how the box looks completed and then um, actually test it and uh, show you how it work, works. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is the box. I ended up not gluing the relays down because uh, it is tight enough that you're going to have to put the wiring onto the relays and solder it on. So it'd be very difficult to get down in that area there and solder everything up. So I actually connected the wires and then uh, put the relays down inside the box but there's really no reason to uh, glue them in there they're not going anywhere and when you get the top on uh, the relays that I chose here or just about the same depth as the box so when you get the lid on it uh, they're not going to move and then uh, I actually glued the horn to the top of the box and then this is what it looks like with the top on it just screws down like that all seven wires come out. I got a little piece of heat shrink there and then a grommet where the wires come through the box. Then two two wires that go up to the piezoelectric horn there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go over the uh, the operation of it. What I have here is I have a 12 volt power supply and I have 12 volts here at these two wires uh, red's positive, black's negative. I have a light wired from the negative side of the supply to the brown wire going back to the uh, to the box I made and this light here is going to represent the seat belt warning light that on my Corvette is located on the center console uh, the center gauge cluster Alright, so uh, right now I have the red and the black wire connected to my power supply with 12 volts applied. And that's the two wires that are going to have 12 volts uh, applied to the box in the car at all times. So that would be this wire here. Uh, the connection that comes inside the box is a red wire that goes to 12 volt positive at all times. And then uh, the ground wire, which is the black wire that comes out of the box. That's the red and black that I have connected there. And uh, what I'm going to do is demonstrate, first of all, what would happen if you had the key in the ignition and the ignition turned off and, this, and the uh, door open. It only works, by the way, on the driver door. So if you notice on the schematic here, there's a key switch and there's a door switch and these two switches are shorted or closed when the keys in the ignition and the door is open and the buzzer will sound to remind you that you have your key in the ignition so I'm gonna show how that works first so if I were to take the blue wire which comes out of the box and ground that that would demonstrate what would happen if those conditions are met so if I take my blue wire and momentarily short it to the ground of the power supply you'll notice that the buzzer will sound now and then that's the first thing we want to check out the second thing we want to check out is will the buzzer buzz if you turn the headlights on with the ignition off headlight reminder and that is the green box or excuse me that's the green wire that comes out of the box and when 12 volts applied to that green wire uh, the horn will sound to remind you that the headlights are on and remember this connection here goes to the convenience outlet a convenience center in the car where there's a headlight 
output. So when the headlights are on, 12 volts is present. So if I take the green wire and I connect it to the positive side of the power supply here, that will demonstrate the headlights being on and will show what would happen there. And you'll see that it sounds. All right. Now the next thing we want to try out is the seat belt light. And I already told you I have a light here. It's basically the same wattage lamp that is in the center console for the warning light. I have one side of that tied to ground, which it is in the car, and the other uh, wire, uh, the other side of the bulb is connected to the brown wire, which goes back to the box. And the brown wire is uh, what comes from the box to drive the lamp. So here's what happens if you turn the ignition on and your seat belt switch is closed, meaning that your seat belt is not latched. All right, so in that case there, the gray wire would have to be shorted to ground, meaning the seat belt is not latched. And get so you can see this. And then you turn the ignition key to the on position, which would apply power to the gray, gray and red wire and it makes the light come on. Now, if you latch the belt, that would open the seat belt switch light, or a seat belt switch, and the light goes off. So that demonstrates the seat belt driver. That's this part of the circuit here. Here's your ignition. When the ignition switch is turned on, current flows through this relay, back out of the box, into the gray wire, and if the seat belt switch is closed, meaning not latched, it will go to ground, cause this relay to energize, close the normally open contacts of the relay one, which will cause the seat belt lamp to turn on. As the other side of that is tied to the 12 volts at all times. Now let's demonstrate what happens when you have the key in the ignition, and then you turn the ignition switch on, which should make the buzzer silence. So, remember the blue wire is going to short if the key is in the ignition and the door is open. So we tie that to ground. And let's say now that we turn the ignition on. That's the red and gray wire that I have here. Buzzer silence. Let's do the same thing with the green wire, which ties to the positive side of the power supply, which is the headlight on reminder, which when the headlight's on, 12 volts will be present at that green wire. And then we turn the ignition on, and the buzzer should silence. Okay, here we go. Headlight's on, get the buzzer, Turn on the ignition, buzzer silences. So that completes this video of the testing of the new box. The new box using uh, uh, relay logic instead of the old 1970s electronics that nobody can figure out, nobody can fix. And uh, the next video I think uh, I'll probably show how this thing actually connects into the car itself. Uh, what I'm going to do is probably mount the box somewhere close to the convenience center which is where the old uh, buzzer was located and then um, I'll take the wires cut them to length probably a lot shorter than what they are here and then I'll install this style of connector which matches the type of connector that you have on the old one You'll see that connects right in where it, where it came from. Uh, these particular ones here go on and crimp and then you heat it and those things shrink down and make a nice looking connection. There's only going to be one that's going to have a different connector on it and that's going to be the headlight reminder. That's going to be the green wire. It's going to have this style of connector and that will go directly into the convenience center. 
and you'll notice this is the wire that it was before it actually had a connector on it but these will do the same thing uh, the only thing you have to watch out for when you install this is make sure you know where you're connecting things so it's not idiot proof like the old boss could only go in one way this you have to pay attention where they go but once you get them in all connected up you're never gonna be going back into that again now remember on my schematic here I verified on my convenience center which connector was which I went over that in the last video so thank you for watching and then I'll probably do one more video showing maybe how that this hooks up in the car and then how it works uh, just demonstrate how it works and um, that'll probably be the end of this project thanks for watching <laughs>